when I got that prognosis and it was given to me by my father that, uh, that the doctors had no cure for the spinal cord, he gave me a call to action. He said, now I want you to go be a better farmer. I want you to be a better husband to your wife with no hands and no legs. And now I'm starting to think and, and process like, some, of these, some of these details. Intimacy, yeah. providing, everything that everything. goes on. Dancing to our favorite song. I mean, we could go on and on and on. He had the, he had the boldness to ask me to be a better coach to my boys, to still teach them how to play ball. I can't even do a layup. He wanted me to be a better disciple. And the last thing that my dad said is he wanted me to be a better contributor to my society. Hello and welcome to The Middle. I'm so grateful that you have joined us. And for the likes and the follows and the shares of our episodes, we really appreciate the audience here at The Middle that has grown and connected with one another. And I'm thrilled to introduce to you our special guest today, my dear friend, colleague, <laughs> brother, adopted. Adopted? Wow. <laughs> I thought it was more blood. But hey. Chad so, Hymas. How are I'm, you? I'm so grateful that we're in person because yeah. during COVID, we've pre presented a ton virtually together. Yeah. yeah. But there's something that doesn't get through the computer that's the same as being in person. We're social people. Yeah. We're not social distancing people. So no. you're right. It's, um, it's rejuvenating to be to be amongst each other, to engage. And quite frankly, you're a hugger. And so your virtual hugs aren't the same as no, your, your in-person hugs. I yeah, try. I know you try, but... I send when you, you start even to, hugs on text sometimes. When you start kissing the lens and stuff, it's a little <laughs> too much, Kaylin. It's a little, <laughs> little too far, but that's all good. Now you have a window already into our relationship. Chad <laughs> and I have shared a stage together on many occasions and more recently virtual stages together. Mm -hmm. And he, he has become a, a trusted faith friend in my life. And I wanted to have him come to the middle and share his story of being in the middle of something that I think is obvious, maybe from, from if know. you're not, if you're listening on podcast, you won't know yet what we're talking about. But if you're watching, you might notice. I don't know. I hope people don't notice. It really? Yet. Well, I think, you know, I, um, Whenever I'm around people, I want them to feel comfortable, feel at ease. Not that, that that they wouldn't, but there is something a little bit different about me. But within a matter of seconds, whether I know people or I don't, it changes. I'd like it. Well, I would like it to disappear so that they feel comfortable. So, so what we're but, talking but the about? Thing, yeah, what we're talking about is I am. You know, my fingers are curled. Um, my body is uh, is 95 percent numb. I am a C four C five uh, quadriplegic, which means which means I'm numb from the armpits to the toes and. And I lost the use of my hands and uh, and my forearms. The movement that that I have is shoulders, uh, and I have only one muscle beneath the armpit, and that's the diaphragm, which allows me to speak to you today without, uh, you know, a trach, an, an air, and a ventilator, right? Which which many people, you know, unfortunately are on right now fighting fighting a disease. But but I used to be on one of those, and and uh, there was a hole in my neck that was doing that for me. And so today I am uh, in a, in a wheelchair, and yeah. so. But again, I try and uh, and uh, not let that be the focus of my messages, uh, as you know, when we've shared the platform. Mm -hmm. But but it has taught me a lot, and I think we're probably gonna hit some of those things. Today. Yeah, and and I was gonna lead out with the fact that in most of our presenting together, it is the backstory, but it's not the main story that you share. And I think we yeah. we both share some some wrestles that help shape our, our careers as speakers and our message that we share. Sure. But I would just say, I always feel like your chair is a sacred space. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I mean, no disrespect or, you know, offense, but I, I see it as a sacred throne that you've learned to share with the world. And so I, I honor it. It's always felt like a sacred privilege to be in your presence and well, to that. see it because I feel like, I feel like it's been, um, like you said, a tutor, but I see it as sacred space. I like your verbiage there. I, um, I see the chair as freedom and freedom is sacred. Mm -hmm. Something that, um, right now, a lot of us are thinking more and more about, um, during this time freedom, because a lot of our freedoms have been taken away mm -hmm. as far as going where you want to go and doing what you want to yeah. do during this time. Lots of, of no's. Time, lots of no's. Right. And so that freedom, while I might be sitting in a chair, a lot of people that are watching and listening uh, to our podcast today, um, they're going through that same mm -hmm. fear, uncertainty and doubt that, that, that perhaps I went through when I uh, 
found out that I was going to be in the chair for the rest of my life. So that gives us an opportunity to do a little bit of a backstory here. Mm. Um, you've you've been in this sacred space in the chair for how many years? Uh, almost 20. We're but coming up on 20. Previous to that, this mm. is not what your life mm. was about, right? You no, were. I was a sexy, very, <laughs> very sexy, uh, strong uh yeah, the truth is, no, yeah. rancher. six foot three, it was my height today, I'm wow. four foot two. Uh, my wife likes to tell people that I lost a couple of feet. I don't think it's that funny either. Um, <laughs> His but, wife uh, is amazing. Shondella is incredible. She's she been, is. you know, I was, we were married for six years prior to the accident. We shared two little boys. Uh, they were three and one. Those same two boys are now, um, are now 22 and 20. Um, I, uh, when we talk about sacredity, that, uh, I, uh, I, I'm very, very close to my boys. I am. Um, you have a sweet bond with your sons. I do. I do have a very, very close a closeness with them because they have uh, grown up with a father in a wheelchair, and mm -hmm. you know, in a lot. I, I just, uh, I, I'm grateful for their servant hearts and for the way that they have grown up. Uh, uh, it's hard for me to let go. Yeah. As they go to college and go on missions and one's do married, things. one's married now. And so, you know, and again, I, 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 it's just, it, and it's a blessing. Uh, he married an absolute gem. I wouldn't have picked anybody else, but, but they need to cleave to their, their passions and their spouses. We're, their, we're sharing so. a, a changing family dynamic season of life. You have a few that have launched and I, and I have one that semi has and one mm -hmm. that's still at home. You have two littles at home too. Yeah, we adopted two more. Shondell and I, uh, we adopted little Gracie uh, from Guatemala. She's now a junior in high school. And then we, we just got a little boy from Ethiopia. Shondell found him uh, when she was over on a, doing some service work in Ethiopia. This was not a planned deal. And he was eight when she found him. That's you know that that's just unreal. Long story short, she found him. She found him behind a urinal. I mean, uh, and I wouldn't even call it a urinal uh, in a because in Ethiopia it's yeah, more third it's, world, a whole, right? it's a whole different ball game. And yeah. so I would just call it a shack where people use the restroom. And he was hiding behind there because he didn't have. Uh, that was his sacred spot. As, as as grotesque as that might sound to some, and as brash, that was his place of comfort. Um, and Shondell found out why real quick, and it's because he was of, being hurt. Well, he was being hurt mentally. Um, open mouth, double cleft, and so he didn't feel accepted. And when she saw him, um, she knew that uh, she wanted him in our home. So that's all been remedied. He's been in our home now for two and a half years. His English is phenomenal. Still he's speaks, amazing. He's, he is amazing. As dark as God made his children, this mm -hmm. kid is. So we have. He's beautiful. He, he is absolutely beautiful. And his dream is to. You know, uh, be it be an oral. My my boys play ball and they're doing things on their own. And this kid wants to be an oral surgeon and fix other people's faces. Why? Because now he knows it's possible. That's his stewardship. So, yeah, right? it's his stewardship. That's his calling. It's yeah. cool. My sister has a cleft lip. I don't think we've ever talked about right, that. Okay. Yeah, we um we have so many middle stories that you could come and share with us because I feel like you have a gift to talk about a number of subjects. And I love how you introduced our conversation today. That. Maybe you're not sitting in a wheelchair, but many of us in 2020 have been shown limitations or been told you can't or careers changed or you've lost loved ones or yeah. the political season that we're at the time of this taping going through is creating divisions and, and rhetoric, chaos. Yes. Yeah. A lot of chaos. Uncertainty. I mean, yeah. fear too. Right. Fear. No matter what side of the fence, we're not here to talk about politics for right. sure, but, but, but. All of us feel that fear and that uncertainty. All that fear. Yeah, what's and so you have these two little boys and you're your six foot three self and you're mm -hmm. working out on the ranch. Do you call mm -hmm. it a rancher farm? Ranch. Okay, yeah, because are, some farmers yeah. don't want to be called ranchers and ranchers don't want to be called farmers. So I, I want like to get both. the right I vernacular. Like okay. Yeah, I just like being out in the fields, green pastures. I like making fields green. I love animals. Um, horses. Horses. We do have horses out there. I We raise elk. That's a little different, mm -hmm. but we raise elk and... We raise uh, about 70,000 birds and release them every year. So pheasants, quail, and chucker. Wow. So it's kind of cool. So the day of the accident, what were you busy doing? I was just um, in the Salt Lake Valley. Um, I didn't have enough money to buy the ground that I wanted to gain a land um, as a 21-year-old kid. And so I started a construction company. Shondell had called me that Tuesday uh, afternoon and told me that our youngest son, um, the 20-year-old now, but back then he was one, had just taken his first two steps. So she asked me if there was any way that I could leave Salt Lake early, 
get home, get the chores done on the ranch because I always go do the chore. I love spending time on the fields. So construction worker by day, contractor by day, farmer by night. Um, I told Chandel that I would hurry home in my angst to see this little kid walk. And then she also wanted me to play ball with him in the garage. So I, so behind you is a brick wall. That's kind of like our garage. Our garage is made of brick and I had a, a basketball rim, regular size, but three feet high. That way I can teach him how to dunk early, right? It's confidence. <laughs> it's a, it's a. Let's so, visualize that at a very yeah, young so age. So that they can have that belief system. I raced to the field. I, uh, I didn't go home first. Uh, I got on a tractor, uh, loaded up a bale of hay that weighs more than, than your car or mine outside, lifted it up in the air. And that's when I, I, I made a bad choice. Um, there was a red light flashing on my dashboard. Uh, I saw the red light. It was an indicator that my hydraulics were low. It, it would be like the gas light going off in your car. I um, I don't know if you've ever driven with a gas light on. I yes. won't put you on the spot. So no, don't say I... that because I, that, that makes you look stupid. So don't do that. Don't no, do that's that. when I practice the power of prayer. Oh, there you go. So I <laughs> don't know that I practiced that that night. But I but I do think there's a, an important message for there our listeners. Is. I, uh, I think that all too often we do get signals, signs, impressions, um, certain feelings, and we ignore them. And... Um, I'm not sitting in a wheelchair because I'm a stupid person. I would never call anybody that's ever made a bad choice stupid. Um, I'm sitting in a wheelchair because I ignored I ignored the red light. And I think that's a significant message for our, our viewers and our listeners to listen carefully to their impressions, their instincts, and don't compromise their values. Mm -hmm. It's okay to compromise or change behaviors, beliefs. I've had to change my beliefs about how I get dressed, what kind of food I eat, how what I walk. What marriage looks like. You know, absolutely. Courtship, intimacy, yes. all those things. Had yeah. to change my my belief system um, and even my attitude towards that. But values, those. Non-negotiable. Well, I believe so. Yeah. God, the way I feel about my country, those are values. Mm -hmm. Family first. Mm -hmm. um, those things, I believe, should never change. And when you start compromising values... The doors close. Mm -hmm. And I've done that before. And so, but, but other things, you know, behaviors, beliefs, attitudes, those can change. So I ignore the red light, uh, put the track to reverse, tap the brakes a little too hard. The momentum of the bale that weighs more than an SUV rolled over backwards. It landed on my body, punched my head to the steering wheel. And uh, the shaft went through my mouth, breaking everything in its path. This has all been redone. It did break all the bones in my neck. In fact, I think you can see this. There's a scar right yes. there. So it's about three and a half inches. Yeah. They uh, they were able to weld my neck back together. I do say weld because they told my family that my neck was stronger now than it was before. And I would never break it again. That's pretty good news. <laughs> and then there was the bad news. Yes. Um, and I want to be careful with the bad news because it, I don't, when I, whenever I ask people what the bad news was, they say, you can't walk, but they're missing half. I mean, this is, I mean. I know it's COVID, but we have sanitizer here. I'm just saying, I can't feel that. Yeah. So that's a double whammy. Versus. I can't feel that. Yeah. So I'm numb from the elbow to the fingertip. I have a little bit of bicep, no tries. I got perfect shoulders. And so. So um, if I do this, you can feel I'm, Absolutely. Yeah, uh -huh. I can feel that. Yeah, I, can always, that I can always more. feel your hugs. Yeah, okay. I can always feel your hugs. Okay. But I can't. And my hand. But that's not that's not a bruise. That's just dirt because you probably you need to vacuum the floors a little bit. You know, I'm just, you know, that's just dirt from the front of the floor. Um, <laughs> but, but, and from the asphalt outside, it's just dirt from the tires. You're normal. Um, yeah, it's just normal hands. And I'll just wash them and, and clean them at night or whenever I want to clean them. And I work gloves a lot. But I, that's where my new life was to begin. There's no glue for the spinal cord. I, I, I severed 95%, excuse me. And I got to live through that. <clears throat> and I, it doesn't make sense to me that that some live and some don't. Um, I can't answer that for our viewers or our listeners today, but I I do want to say that I I believe in a greater plan, and that's what allows me to wake up every morning with purpose and passion. So when we're here on the yellow couch at the middle, we really like to unpack being in the middle of it, and I can feel that some of our viewers are just receiving a similar diagnosis. They're just being presented with a new stewardship assignment of maybe being paralyzed, maybe MS diagnosis, maybe a divorce, whatever that is. You're you're laying in the hospital bed and you're told this is what your new reality is going to be. And I I know the answer because we're friends, but your first response isn't the wisdom and hope you just shared. What was no. your first response? Well, you know, the, when I got that prognosis and it was given to me by my father that, uh, that the doctors had no cure for the spinal cord, he gave me a call to action. He said, now I want you to go be a better farmer. 
with no hands and no legs. I know that's you're shaking your head. I just used that same motion, but with some vocabulary <laughs> as well. Uh, he wanted me to be a better husband, and I'm thinking to myself, bleep, bleep, I didn't bleep. say, yeah, yeah, I didn't say anything right then, but he said, I want you to be a better husband to your wife with no hands and no legs. And now I'm starting to think and, and process like, some, how of these, do I provide? some of these details. Intimacy, yeah. providing everything that everything. goes on, dancing to our favorite song. I mean, we could go on and on and on. He asked me. I, he had the, he had the boldness to ask me to be a better coach to my boys, to still teach them how to play ball. I can't even do a layup. And then he wanted me to be a better, he wanted me to be a better disciple. And the last thing that my dad said is he wanted me to be a better contributor to my society. So I responded back with those beep, beep, beeps. Yeah. And my dad heard that very Because you were angry. Well, I felt like he was lacking credibility. Yeah. I mean, where's he? Easy to say when you're standing, dad. Yeah. Easy to say when you're on the other side of the fence, but when you're in my circumstance. And, and, and so here's the key. My dad heard my vocabulary, walked out of the room, not because he was offended by my, by the bombs, not because he's offended by my vocabulary, but I think it's this is a very, very good metaphor and an analogy for our listeners. Um, he left because my heart wasn't open enough, it wasn't broken, and it wasn't contrite. So he knew you weren't receptive? Well, on the ranch, we say you can lead a horse to water. Yeah, but you can't force him to drink. And I was being the undrinkable horse. Mm-hmm. If we have viewers that aren't willing to be open-minded today to this... They're not going to receive it. God help them, because yeah. I don't know what we can. Yeah. Right, right. I, so I hope that our viewers have an open mind. Yeah. I, my dad can't. He can't make me drink when he said. So he came back in, just like I believe God does. I mean, whenever we're not willing to listen to God, He withdraws His spirit. I, I believe, and then, but but He always comes back to see if we're ready. My dad came back too, and he said, "Are you ready? Are you ready to be teachable? Or are you just going to sit there in that bed like everybody else does?" Mm. That's bold. Because he knows you, Chad. That's bold. He knows your heart, and that's right. a challenge. You like a good challenge, well, don't you think? I, I've always, I think I've always been kind yeah. of had an entrepreneurial spirit, right. and I like a challenge. But, but I still was. So I, I still question him. But I said, I the first thing I do is I ask for his forgiveness for the words that I said to him because he's my dad, and he doesn't deserve that. And I said some things that really questioned his wisdom and his knowledge, and so. I, I asked for his forgiveness and I apologized, but then I, but then I went into real reality. I said, Dad, let's be real. I can't be a good husband because I can't hold her hand. We can't have any more children. I can't play ball with the kids. I can't put the worm on the hook to catch a fish. I can't ride the four-wheeler to farm. I can't get on the horse. I can't turn the pages on the good book to be a disciple, so forget about that one. And I can't contribute to society because I can't have a job. I mean, I guess I could be a waiter, but all I could do is go in a circle. So that, that's not going to work out too well. And so I questioned that. And then he said something very, very powerful. He said, you just said the word I in all five of those sentences. He said, this little meeting is not about you. It's about everybody else out in the waiting room that we can't let see you because your attitude will affect them. So I'm not letting your wife in. I'm not letting your kids in. I'm not letting your grandparents in. I'm not letting your brothers in. I'm not letting your sister in. Nobody's allowed to come in because you're making it all about you. And that was the ter- that was a pivotal moment in my life. Now, metaphorically today, I would be willing to say that today's podcast is not necessarily for you and I. Mm-hmm. It certainly isn't for those that are watching. It's for everybody else who will benefit because of what they're thinking about and the influence they'll have on their families' lives, or their employees, or their employee, their their friends or colleagues. Your circle of influence today's about them. And wouldn't you agree that we'll do oh, things for others? Well, that we won't do for ourselves. Oh, I I have said after my sister died by suicide, what saved my life is my first book was coming out that year, and my speaking career had just like not because of her death; it had already started to build, but. That wasn't a coincidence that there was already a book submitted before she died. There was already speaking happening. So then this really big thing that could have stopped all of that was already in place. And I had two kids that needed me to get up every day. The grief. Then we lost a job. I had two kids watching. So I love that invitation for our viewers to not just consider their circle of influence, but who needs this message today? Who's laying in a bunch. Yeah. From from what they're thinking of right Right. now. And so... And we'll do things for others. So that's a whole new reason to come to the middle more often. Listen with intentionality, not just in it, one ear out the other, but listen and learn, take notes and dive into it. And maybe that's their 
Uh, that could be their weekly manna, their mm-hmm. daily manna. I'm just saying that could be the that could be their bread. That's just my a thought. Chad, that I have. Sorry for the four. Chad I'm just speaking my language, that, bringing that up be, the manna I, in the middle. I just I just think that that's I think that could be the that could be what allows them to wake up with purpose and passion. When I wake up and realize it's not about me, that today's not about me, that gives me a reason to wake up with purpose and passion. So how did that conversation with your dad end up being, you know, this world renowned speaker? author, contributor to the world, father, who then had two more children come into his life, Mm -hmm. right? And I think from what I see of your marriage, a marriage that you value, that has grown, that has flourished, how did that, Chad, emerge from that conversation? Well, um, it has, so it, 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 it hasn't, um, people, people ask me all the time, Gail Lynn, when did, so when did, when did that finally, when did it finally Click. Click. Yeah. When did, when did it emerge? When did your marriage become what it is today? And the truth is it hasn't. No. It's emerging. Yes. It's a progress. I am, I'll be honest, I have struggled for the last six months in my marriage because for the last 20 years pre-COVID. You were traveling. That's an easy scapegoat. That's yeah. my drug of choice. Yeah. The woman that I am married to that I love the most, that is my sweetheart. You didn't I, see her very often. Well, I know I said for better or worse, I didn't plan on her helping me get dressed. Yeah. I know it sounds like fun. Not fun. It's not fun. I didn't plan on her helping me shower. I know it sounds like fun. Not it's fun. not fun. Yeah. And so for me, having other people assist or help, like today when I arrived, yeah. while I, I love the gentleman that helped me, his name is Jake, I think. Yes. Right? Love him. Love his heart. I'm not in love with him. There's a difference. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. It's I love person... Jake too, and I'm not in love with him but, 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 either. But, but He's but our camera him. guy, by the way. And, and he helped me. Yeah, but, but, so there's a difference. Uh, in other, right. So because you want, a, I want your that relationship to be like right. you're equal, not So the dependent. last six months, and it's good, the last six months, I'm learning, I'm still emerging to learn how to be a good husband. But Chad, don't you think every marriage on the planet had to go through a COVID adjustment? Or are. Or, or, or still is. And will always happen. Every week I'm seeing the divorces right. come up that people right. weren't able to pivot. Right. Right? That I think that's so honest. I, we started speaking during COVID at the beginning of COVID and then through the middle. And now we're to, we've just had some recent ones. And I've seen a change in you. And I've seen your willingness to say, no, this has not been, you know, I'm the, I'm the motivational speaker, but I'm being tutored. On yeah. a new level because you haven't had, had a lot. Of yeah. It's been an eye opener All of for us. me. Yeah, it's kicked sure. me. So yeah, and, and me as well. So, but but it's uh, again. I think that to, to your point, to your question, um, it, it, there's these spurts where we go and it's great. And then I lo- there was a man that spoke last week. I, I listened to his words. His name was Jeff Holland, and he we always like these. We always like these these you know, life to be kosher. How would we feel at the end? This is kind of his words. I'm paraphrasing, but at the end of our days, when we when we all leave, and we we'll all leave this life sometime, if we were to go and be in our in our Maker's presence and in in Jesus Christ's presence, and we had it easy, and knowing I, I would want to be in that room, I'm just saying I would feel uncomfortable. And I had a pretty good life and had everything kind of handed to me and by by a spoon spoon fed, and yet no challenges. So I love the fact that. What Jeff said was just is so powerful because it made me feel like, hey, this is something I will go through because I want it. Just it pierced me. It pierced me. It don't know. To me too. It, it hit home with me. I, I know. I saw your tweets. I mean, you're like tweet. <laughs> I, I I don't know if it was I don't know if it was Gangland or Trump, but you were tweet tweeting. It was just you were just tweeting. I'm big on Twitter. <laughs> I know. In April tweet- and in I October. I know. One weekend. I know. I know. Two you're weekends just, a year. And you hit that hard, but Jeff he, didn't he nail it? Oh, I mean, he honestly, I I literally when you were talking about what your dad said to you and what God says to us and the warning light on on the machine, right? Is I want to learn with the brick, not the brick wall. Yeah. But until Jeffrey R. Holland stood up, I could feel the brick wall around my heart. And yeah. it pulled it down because it's true. I want to be in the presence of Christ. Yeah. And, and you got to go through challenges to do yeah, that. Yeah, to be comfortable with I, that. I thought to myself a, a, a Neil Maxwell quote that said, you can't be refined without enduring a little bit of heat. And so we're all going to be going through some heat right now. We're wearing masks and things of that nature. And I, I think it's refining us Yeah. for whatever's next. Right. We're, we're being refined. That's my belief system. Anyway. Well, yeah. I will say that we could, we could spend hours talking about the little ways in which and the big ways you've had to find new normals and adjustments to the things that many of us take for granted 
Um, but it's become, I, I feel like this, this chair is your superpower now. And it's allowed you to teach messages of hope and resiliency in a way that is really honest. Like, I, I love that you're saying I'm a work in progress. I don't have it all figured out. I keep learning at the next level of when, you know, I love the stories that you have shared specifically about how you learn to be a father and a, a husband in, in new ways and in powerful ways. And that's become a great gift. What do you draw from each day? Because I love to ask my guests this question about what their manna is and whether you're at the beginning laying in a hospital bed and metaphorically saying, bleep, bleep, bleep to someone that's well-meaning to give you a pep talk, or you're you're 20 years into it and you've kind of learned to feel a little more comfortable with the uncomfortable. What what have you found helps you each day? You do a brilliant job. He, he shares on social media, Chad shares every morning. I'm sorry, I like run to the bathroom because I'm old and I have to hurry and get there. Then I check my phone and usually it's a thought of the day from Chad that I'm like, you're right, Chad, you're right. That's what I need. What is today's that you said? Um, today's this morning, 4.30 a.m. It came to me that um, uh, 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 comparison is the advocate of the adversary. And, and I felt like you knew exactly what I'd been wrestling with. And so it was just for me. I don't care if all the other thousands of people that watch or, or, or read your feed see it. It was a good reminder to me. What what has become your manna? Because I know that you've talked about comparisons yeah. in your own life and how easily it is to look around and see others literally running and skipping and dancing and doing the things that so you're So manna not. is just a metaphor or... Actually, it's real, but it is a metaphor for what gets us up in the morning, what keeps us alive, what keeps us nourished, what keeps us fueled, right? Mm -hmm. um, my manna is when I wake up in the morning, I need some time to myself because I can't go help others unless I take care of myself first. So for some people, that's exercise. For others, that's coffee. For some, that's Judge Judy. Whatever it is for you, <laughs> uh, you need some time for yourself. Yeah. Um, the second thing is I need to go find someone to serve. Whenever I find someone to serve, now that could be something as simple as saying to my daughter, Gracie, just want you to, can you come talk to me for a second? Uh, just want you to know how, how grateful I am for all you do for mom and I and, and for, for being such a sweet girl. Um, you know, I don't talk about grades. You know, I, just, I just want her to know the value that she has because she's going to be faced with fear and uncertainty and doubt. And when she's faced with those rejections or suicidal thoughts or whatever, we all go through that. The ammunition she uses to fight that back is that service that was rendered. So I want to find someone to serve, and it could be as something as simple as a compliment um, or a conversation or whatever, a text to somebody, letting them know how grateful I am for them. Whenever I do that, two things happen. This is a great way to end. The first thing is, is that when you're thinking of others, you don't have time to think about yourself. And then your problems, and you can see some of my problems. I mean, I'm physically numb. They don't go away, but I don't have time to think about them. So today after I did my manna, then I got ready, took me a couple hours and I came here. I don't have time to worry about the fact that I'm done. I just don't have the time. And you have lived and have continued to bless my life, but you live a life of service. You're messaging mm -hmm. your, um, the way you care for your family. I feel like that is, it's such an uplift for me personally, but I know you have audiences all over the world that you have have shared this experience in a way that helps us reframe our lives. And I just want to honor you and, and express my appreciation for your friendship, for your support of me and your willingness to really share a message of, of pivoting and, and, and finding a way to find meaning, even when it doesn't look the way you wanted it to look. So I appreciate uh, you so much. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed today. And thank you for, um, making me laugh. He always make me laugh and cry. And he throws in a little snark and it just... A little just, sass. A little sass. I love a little, a little sass, sass from little the sass. ranch. Yeah, good. yeah. Good. yeah. And I feel like, you know, I feel like we have new friends today that are, are going to feel like they can get up out of their own hospital beds and cool. and find the new path and bless the world the way you have. So thank you, Jeff. Thanks I love so, much. so much. And thank you again for joining us here on The Metal. I hope you'll share this episode with someone that needs to be reminded that they have uh, influence and, and something to share in the world, no matter if life is looking the way they thought it was going to look or not, or if they're facing a tragedy or a diagnosis that they weren't ready for. And I hope you see this again here on the yellow couch on the metal set.